version versus gone deck, the overall method, uh, the overall effect is the same. It's a vanishing card box. Um, I think the only main difference with mine is that you can continuously flow and make the box appearance and then make it vanish, as far as I know. Maybe with unboxing you can do the same. Also another thing with mine is that it makes the side of the box appear as, oppo as opposed from the front. At least that's the gimmick that you have received, the template gimmick that you received in your box. So after unboxing was released, I was planning on releasing Gondek. However, I wanted everything to be included. I want the entire gimmick to be made so that when you, uh, with the wave of the hand, the entire box appears with the printing. Now that required the US playing card company to actually print uh, specific gaffed cards that had certain cut edges alongside the, the box, the front of the box, in order for us to be able to uh, include it in the package, include the entire Gondek gimmick. However, the USPCC uh, refused. Uh, they refused because they did not want the, uh, the front of the bicycle box, the logo, the word bicycle, as well as the spade to be altered in any way during the printing because they feared that you know when we perform it, people would see that. However, that's obviously not the case, but I couldn't really convince them because they don't really know magic, so they don't really understand anything besides printing. So that was one main reason why it was not released throughout the year, and that's why it's taken so long for me to try to convince them, try to print the gaff cards, I could not. So this was the best I could do, was just have uh, Murphy's, uh, the guys over at Murphy's, did a really good job of creating the, the template gimmick without the actual printed uh, box onto the flaps. What we'll have to do now is instead of having it all done, uh, you take your own box, whatever box you want to use, red, blue, bicycle, tallyho, anything really, um, and then we're going to apply that box onto the template that you have been provided, as well as the magnets and the thread. Um, that part we'll figure out later. Uh, I'll go th through that with you. But um, without further ado, this is Gondek. Let's get into the initial overview and the construction for your basic gimmick. Okay, so your Gone Deck package comes with uh, this advanced flap, and it also comes with this uh, bicycle sort of fake front of the card. Now, this was the best I could get from making the gaff card for Gone Deck, and essentially, uh, this is not what I wanted. What I wanted was to offset the printing of bicycle to the left slightly so that uh, we could kind of complete this image of the left side of the bicycle being here and the um, the side of the bicycle logo where it says made in the USA right over there uh, but they did not want to print off a uh, they, they didn't want to offset the printing because that would be defaming their bicycle logo so that's why they didn't want to do that but they did allow me to print this out so you May have been included this. This is not necessary. You do not need this at all. In fact, um, this was just to, to give so that you, uh, so that in case that you don't have a bicycle box to destroy, um, this is what you get. Uh, so I'm not going to use this, and you can use this if you want to to pretty much paste it over here. That's 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 what's happening. We're we're uh, we're using a, a box of cards. And we're going to place it right over here. However, we're not going to do it for this here. Um, now, uh, grab any box that you want to, preferably um, blue, like I said, especially if you're going to be included a blue back design with the uh, bicycle. So just grab the matching bicycle box. And you will need scissors, super glue, rubber cement, and of course the magnets that's been included. Now this, this part is optional. Uh, you don't really need magnets, but the magnets really help for uh, securing that flap in case that it doesn't go well, it doesn't complete uh, completely. And lastly, of course, will be the thread that you've also been provided. So this is the thread that you've been provided. Now this is of course a lot more than what you've uh, seen in your box. This is prim elastic thread. Uh, 200M. I'll have a, the, the text for you so you can search it up on Amazon or on Google. 
Um, they're very cheap. It goes for uh, $10 on Amazon. It goes uh, for two pounds on um, different websites, eBay, or uh, some sites in the UK, and I'll sell a lot of these for cheap. I may be selling this on my website. I'm not really sure, um, I, but you know, you can check my website if, if, if it isn't available there or not. So let's get into the construction. Uh, now this this bicycle fake front, of course, uh, you can use it if you want. Um, I'm just going to open up this box and tear it up. Uh, but this this essentially is the front of a box. Okay. Okay, so you're going to open up the box, and you're going to open up the bottom section, essentially just getting rid of its structure, its basic structure, because we don't need that. And we're going to cut out the front portion, the side portion, and that's it. We're not going to use anything else. The very basic action of this, now this is without the scoring or the gluing, but you show the box, and this is, well, this is actually the whole Gondak gimmick right here. Uh, you show the box like this, and when you let go, the thread's going to bring this over, and I'm just going to remove this now. This is going to bring it over and close into a single card. That's, that's the secret for Gondak. That's actually how the entire thing works. Uh, and to make it appear, all we're doing is we're taking this, clipping that end, pulling it from the string out. And then when you do that, and it completes... Uh, it gives a really nice 3D illusion of a box. This is <clears throat> this is really powerful because what they've seen, they've seen such a flat, a uh, one-dimensional flat image of a card. And just with a simple wave, now it becomes three-dimensional. So uh, from it's that that in itself is a is a visual effect. Uh, let alone changing a card into a, a you know the front of the box. So. Uh, let's let's get into it right now. Now you can leave this connected if you want to. However, we're just gonna leave. Uh, we're just gonna cut it off. So, just gonna cut off the sides, of the flat. We're just gonna focus on getting this face phoenix right onto here. So this might be a better demonstration. So that's the front of the box, and that's the side of the box. All right. Now this right now is a little bit too thick because playing card box stock is pretty thick, including the card as well. If you want to use the card, you're going to have to split it. All right. So I want to show you how to split the card box. You're going to take your fingernail and you're going to pick. You're going to pick at the, the top layer of the card box. Now the playing card box has many layers. I think it has like three or four or something like that. It's kind of hard to dictate how many layers it has. And you just kind of peel at it. Okay. If you mess up, you can always grab another box. Uh, now you want the layers to be as thin as possible, so there seems to be more layers going on here, so I'm just going to carefully pick at this. Uh, now there's many different uh, tutorials out there that, that teach you how to split cards. Um, Splitting Sessions by Blake Voigt is always a good one. I've recommended that multiple times, and um, yeah, you can get it. Uh, you can just search it on Google and you'll be able to find it. So this is not uh, completely flat. You can actually make it thinner by using uh, sandpaper and kind of just sanding it down. Um, but for explanation purposes, I'm just going to leave it as is. Now, we're going to want to figure out where to cut this Phoenix uh, front box design exactly to where this crease is, as you can see over here. So exactly where this fold is right here, that's where we want to cut it down here. So I'm just going to line it up perfectly. I'm going to make a little mark. Just like that. So you can't see it. It's impossible to see it on camera, but I can see it in person. So now I want to take a ruler, and where that mark was, where I, where I made that mark, I'm going to just cut it straight down. Uh, straight edge. As you can see, this is not even a ruler. This is just an acrylic piece. Uh, find the mark that you want and just cut it straight down. Make it a clean cut. And that this is actually perfect right here. So one section is going to go here. The other section is going to go here. And then the last section is going to go here. Okay, We're going to uh, actually split this as well. 
And now we're going to start the gluing process. Okay. Uh, for this, we're going to use rubber cement. So take your rubber cement and just kind of rubber cement the entire card, just everything. But try not to get the rubber cement to end up in the crevice on the crease, on both creases, okay? Because, uh, because if there's too much rubber cement there, it might kind of ruin the, um, the hinges. So now that I've kind of rubber cemented this, this entire card, um, what we want to do is actually place two magnets on the edge of the uh, Gondek gimmick. This is the portion where it shows the um, the front side, where it says uh, made in the USA or printed by the expert or whoever, I don't know, anyone, um, any box you choose. So that's where the magnets go. Okay, and we're going to kind of rubber cement the magnets as well. So we're going to cover them later on. All right, and you're sort of almost finished on this end. What we want to do now is rubber cement these individual cards of the box. What I like to do is actually take a random card that I don't care for, place the, in, the object I want to rubber cement, and I kind of just go over it like this. This way I don't get my table filled with rubber cement. Okay, then you just let them dry, let all the pieces dry. Okay, so all the pieces have dried, and now we want to paste uh, these front of the boxes onto the card. I like to usually start out with the middle section. Um, I don't know why, I just do, so I'm going to do it. Uh, care, do your best and be as diligent as possible. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick this on. So there you go. Now I already can see there's some overlap. Um, between here, it's overlapping outwards like this. And that's going to be a problem, more sort of, not, not a huge problem, but uh, just for my sake, I'm, I'm going to want to clean it up. So you take an X-Acto knife, and you kind of go on the other side, like this. You, see, you already can see the overlay. And perfect. There you go. Look how beautiful that is. Okay. Seamless. Now, you're going to take the other end, the, the fatter end, and instead of lining this up with here, I'm actually more focused in lining up the words Phoenix, right, in this, or if you're using bicycle, bicycle, with this side, okay? So you kind of just match up all the designs perfectly. And I believe I did that. So it's not so much about lining up this section with the third section. It's more lining up this with this. Okay. Now there's always going to be an, an excess amount if you're using a cut-up playing card box. Of course, if you're using the included um, fake front, there won't be any excess because this is the perfect. Uh, this is the exact size of a, you know, playing card. So uh, flip over the card as usual and. Just trim off the excess. Now you also have to make sure your X-Acto knife is very, very sharp. If it's not sharp, you're going to mess up for sure. It's not going to cut it and trim it perfectly. So as you can see, we're almost done. Now we just need to do the final section, which is um, the, uh, in this case, it says air cushion finish. Usually, I believe in the bicycle ones, it says made in the USA or something like that. But regardless, paste this onto there and trim off the excess on the other side. And there you go. You're finished. 
Um, this is pretty cool. So what happens is you show the box like that. Uh, it looks pretty convincing, especially for lay people. And when you let go, uh, the thread, which is what we're going to use as the, the thing that brings the flap back, um, it's going to swing it back here like this. Now, uh, a, a note about thread work. Thread can last for a very, very long time if you hook it up. So, uh, sorry, if you hook it up properly. So I'm going to make sure that I go very slowly and very detailed so that you make sure you hook this up perfectly exactly according to how I do it. Because uh, the way I do it makes it so that the, the thread lasts for about, I think, 60 performance, 60 to 90 performances before it starts to get loose. And even when it's loose, you can still use it. Um, but in case it does break, that's what your magnets are for, that they will save you in case your, your thread completely uh, snaps. So I will go over the magnets and the thread right now. As you can see, you've been included with extra magnets. It's, I think a total of four, but honestly, two, two magnets work just as well. But anyways, as you can tell, I placed two magnets on these ends over here, and now I place the other two over here on the jack. Take super glue and dab them where the magnets landed. All you do is you just drop the magnets exactly where it lands. Same thing here. Dab the, mag uh, the glue and let go. Quite simple. Now, as you can tell, I have a, a queen over here. Um, the reason for this is because I'm going to actually take the queen and place it on top of the jack. But we don't need to use the full card because if we use the full card, then this card becomes three cards thick, and that's too thick. So we want to we want to just split the queen up. Now we're going to use our trusty rubber cement, and we're going to rubber cement the queen on top of the mag. And now let it dry. Okay, so now that these have dried, we're going to just stick them together. Again, try to be as precise as possible. And there you go. Now, uh, sometimes some people actually choose not to do this. Some people choose not to have the magnets inside the cards. The magnets is just as a backup for me. Uh, when you don't have the magnets, the card becomes only one card, uh, sorry, one and a half cards thick. When you add the magnets, it becomes three cards thick or 2.7 cards thick, if you want to be super precise. Um, essentially, the magnets make the card thicker than it needs to be. Um, for me, I like the magnets. They really help me. Um, but I know some people decide not to add the magnets, thus making the card much thinner and probably less obvious. Uh, for me, however, I usually perform Gondek uh, in camera situations when I'm, when I'm performing you know, on stage. So it, it, for me, it, it doesn't really show that much. Uh, and it's usually kind of copped, co copped in my hand like this in such a way. So when I make it produce, so, so when I go here and I do something like this, produce the cards. So obviously this is fine. I wave it over. Um, I kind of angle the card like that towards the camera when I when I complete the card box. So they're only seeing a top angle view of it. Of course, if you go here like this, they can kind of tell it's more than one card. But then again, at this point, I feel like um, magicians kind of overthink. So uh, we don't really need to be that worried because people don't really scrutinize thicknesses of playing cards. Unless, of course, it's like five cards thick. But still, it, it, it is an impressive feat when you see card box just somehow vanish into a single card. I mean, that is pretty, pretty impressive. Anyways, so that's just the options. I wanted to lay them out. Now it comes to the threading. This is super important. We're going to take a, uh, a needle of sorts. This is just a pin. You can use a hole puncher, a tiny hole puncher if you want to. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to poke holes along the blue border of the cards and on top of that we want it to be coming out from the middle section of the playing card so we kind of gauge 
where we want it to come from. I want it to come from here. So this is where the um, front of the box is. It's going to come on the middle section close to this flat end. So we kind of go around, kind of guesstimate. So I'm thinking right here and just kind of push. So because the card is actually pretty thick, I decided to use a hole puncher. Now this is just a hole puncher that's very small. Uh, it's pretty much the length, uh, the diameter of um, a needle. And we're just gonna hole punch it like that. You can tell that was pretty easy. Okay. And check to make sure it was the right place. More or less it was. So now we're going to hole punch the other end, similarly, like that. Done. Now what's good about this is because you, you still can't really see the holes that were punched because of the design. And this is why, this is where the bicycle design or anything that's kind of complex comes handy. Uh, if you use a simple design, kind of like, um, like like the uh, the B design, uh, not the B, the wind designs, or something similar, uh, Saturns or Kings in this case. Um, it, you know, it's a beautiful deck. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it it will flash, including the thread. So you want to use a complex design, like the Phoenix, the bicycle, uh, the Shinlim deck. Shinlim deck is pretty complex, as you can see on the back design, because there's a lot of lines. You're allowed to hide the thread when you're threading. I'll show you what I mean right now. So you grab a good amount of thread and I'm gonna do something called double threading. If you've seen any of my previous videos, I do this a lot. Uh, and essentially what this is, is, you grab the needle and it is hard to catch it on camera because this thread is semi-invisible. As you can see, the needle is right over here, and the thread is parallel, running parallel alongside each other. Okay, so that's that's called double threading. And so now we're going to loop it um, in through this end, like this, out through this end. We're just going to now super glue it alongside this blue border. Okay, kind of let it that dry. Same thing on the other end. and let that dry as well. So after it has dried, we're going to now snip off the ends over here. So kind of just cut the excess thread because we don't need that. And there you go. You have your almost done gone deck. Okay. Now, when you are going to uh, pull this out like this, you want to do it slowly. You don't want to do it too hard because thread is kind of like a balloon. If you stretch it really hard or you just blow on it without um, warming up the balloon, it's going to break. So you just kind of slowly, millimeter by millimeter, let the thread stretch out. There you go. Okay. And there it is. You have made your gone deck gimmick. Let's get into how to use the gone deck gimmick. So this is your gone deck gimmick now. You'll notice the thread that's running alongside down here is kind of visible under certain lighting conditions, as well as the creases that are formed when the card bent, right, from the 
the first crease to the second crease to, of course, your thread. Uh, the solution I use is I take a blue Sharpie and I dot where it's supposed to be blue. So I take the Sharpie and I dot exactly where it's supposed to be blue uh, along the white crease. Okay, so the parts where it's white, where it's actually supposed to be blue, I just use a marker and I dot it blue. Um, for the thread, I just color the entire thread blue. Because if you notice on this side, it won't really affect it either as well because the box is blue as well. So you just kind of kind of got to play around on how to hide the um, the thread as well as the creases. This is how we use the Gondek gimmick. Um, this is what the looks like from the side. As I wave my hand, I'm unlocking that first portion with a magnet. Okay, so I unlock it with my palm, and now my thumb is going to clip alongside this portion. So as you can see, my palm is unlocking that magnetic flap. I clip as if I'm doing a thumb clip with the coin, but this time just the card. I raise it up over, regrip, down. So now I'm in this position here. And the angles are pretty good. Okay. If you've ever done the Marlow tilt uh, for the ambitious routine, that's kind of the angles for the Marlow tilt. Okay, like this side is more or less kind of sensitive, not really, but this side is completely covered, and of course the front as well. Um, and then now when you close it, of course, you just close your hand and you just release the flap. So this is what it looks like from the side. Make sure hand's empty, close your hand, boom. Of course, you can also um, drop the card, that works too as well. There's many different ways you can uh, go about, you know, making the, the box vanish. Because so, because of the thread and because how quick it is, I think this is the advantage uh, with thread versus other ways of making a flap card. Um, thread moves much faster, much quicker, and especially if you make it correctly, it will last longer than the other uh, methods of uh, you making a flap card. Now, of course, this is not any regular flap card. Gondek is considered an advanced flap because, of course, as you can see, there's many different layers. Okay, but I mean, this is essentially it. That that this is the Gondek, Gondek gimmick. Uh, making the Gondek vanish is pretty easy um, and the most fun, I think. Making it appear is pretty tough. So when you're waving it over, you're going to unhinge the um, the magnetic portion, which is on the this side of the card. Okay, uh, you do that with palm of your hand. Unhinge like this from the front. They they can't really see it. All right. Now when you go forward, your thumb is going to clip. Okay, out. Now your first finger is going to grab it and keep it still. What I mean still is in keeping it from flapping outwards like that. Okay. And of course from here there's many different ways you can uh, release it. You can toss it into the air. There's also the method of shaking the card like that and having the card vanish. Or you can just wave your hand over the card and then also the flap will release. And that's about it. Let's get into the more advanced way of vanishing the uh, Gon deck. So welcome to the uh, extra bonus sections for the uh, Gon deck. Uh, this is the part where the apparent deck of cards turns into a card box. Uh, this is how it works. So. Essentially, we can use the front bicycle box that I've included for you, and I've created the basic template, again, like, like you all very well know already, of the Gon deck. All I did was I scored the appropriate places and I glued it onto a playing card. Okay? Uh, this is very simple. In your, um, in your file, in that little link in your Gon deck box, should have received something like a PDF, all right? And this PDF is of a bunch of lines, and this is to simulate what looks like the front of the deck of cards. Uh, 
Uh, this can go by many words, but this was made famous by Riot, by uh, Dan Haas, and uh, Paul Harris Presents, I believe. So what's going to happen is we're going to cut out a piece of the lines and place it on the front end. So remember how the original Gon deck, so this is the original Gon deck. This looks like the front of the playing card box. Okay. This is going to look like the front of the deck of cards. And the top over here is going to look like a Phoenix deck. Of course, we're going to get rid of this maiden design over here, and we're going to just replace it with a Phoenix back. Okay. So you begin by cutting the Riot gimmick. Kind of guesstimate how much you need. It doesn't have to be exact because we're going to trim it out later. So I think we need about this much. So we can check. That looks about right. Uh, and all we're going to do is we're just going to take some glue, a glue stick and we're going to glue it onto here. Now you can use rubber cement if you want to, but I'm just going to speed up the process here. And also another thing is because this riot gimmick is so thin, so it doesn't really matter that much. And let it dry. However, while this is drying, uh, you can actually cut off the excess just a little bit. I'm not going to cut all of it. I'm just going to cut just some of the excess, let the rest dry. Uh, and while it's fully drying, I'm actually going to cover up this section of the card. How we do this is we just take the back of a playing card that matches this design. In this case, it's Phoenix, but of course, you know, whatever card design you use, that's the one that, that you're going to want to use. Split the card. And now what we're going to do is place it on top like that but only this section. So that means we're going to have to cut off right around here. Uh, and, and this is how we do it. We kind of estimate. A lot of this is estimation. Take your exacto knife. Make a small little scar. That's where it's going to be. It's, again, impossible to see on camera, but I can see it with my eyes. Take a ruler of anything. And... Scale it down. So similarly, this is actually quite thin and um, I'm kind of lazy, so I'm just going to use a glue stick as well for this end. And another reason why actually I'm using a glue stick is uh, while rubber cement is good, the problem with rubber cement is that you have to hit it perfectly when you place, uh, when you stick the two objects together, because rubber cement they, uh, they, they you know they stick permanently, not permanently, but they stick immediately. So with this glue stick, I can actually stick it on, and move it around for about five minutes. Ah, uh, sorry, not five minutes. For about five seconds or so before it kind of permanently. Uh, get stuck on. So I can kind of shift it, make sure that the borders are all aligning properly. I believe they are. Let's kind of double check. And now I can trim off the excess. And there you go, voila, it's pretty much finished. So, you know, you show what seems to be a deck of cards, and when you come over, of course, you already know how to apply the thread and the magnets and everything. Um, I don't have to go through that. If you don't know how it's done, of course, please skip back to the very first main overview slash construction of the Gondak gimmick. All you're going to do is we're going to use super glue or rubber cement, whichever one you want to do. Um, if you are scared of ruining the box or the box is worth a lot, use rubber cement because that stuff doesn't ruin um, playing card material.
if you don't care, like I don't care, then use super glue. All we're going to do is carefully align it perfectly with the playing card box. Like that. And there you go. There you have it. So now when you come over and over, it gives the illusion of a deck of cards. And when you wave your hand or whatever, I don't have the elastic thread hooked on right now, but it comes on over, it clicks because of the magnets, and then now you can show a deck of cards. And that's how it works. So uh, this is the portion where, if you saw me, um, when I had the, the card box and then I blew on it and it just spun and the box apparently vanished. Uh, this is just another variation of using the Gone Deck. Uh, this is the hardest variation to perform, not to construct, but to perform, uh, because it's very difficult. You're doing a magic trick and on top of that you're doing a very difficult flourish. Uh, the flourish I'm performing is called Windchill by Frankie Morales. I won't teach it. So this is called Windchill by Frankie Morales. I'm not going to teach it, but I'm just going to perform it. So this is what it looks like. like that. And then out over down so that's what it looks like and this is what it looks like with gone deck so you have the gone deck gimmick out like this and essentially you're letting go of the uh, the, the flap and on top of that you're gonna let the card spin by blowing on it uh, essentially you're just blowing on the card but there are certain ways you can hold the card so that the card will spin more than once, so like this. Okay, um, it's very difficult, as you can see. I'm even struggling with it, so I won't lie. It took me multiple takes to do this, um, but it's worth a shot. I figured I'd put it in the trailer just because it, you know, it looks cool. Um, you can get uh, Frankie's Windchill uh, online. You can search it up. I'm sure he has it on his website or something like that. I'm not exactly positive, but or you can ask him. Um, that's it. So it's just the wind chill combined with gone deck. Thank you very much. So welcome to the section where uh, we had the uh, single card in one hand and the card box in the other and then they seem to have transposition. So then the box appeared here and the deck appeared here. Uh, this is how it works. It's actually really simple. Um, it uses a concept called black art. Uh, you can get this type of black material called paper velour from highgloss.com. Okay, it's kind of a black material that is sticky on this side. So. How this works is you kind of get a playing card box, glue a single playing card on top, very simple, grab some scissors, cut a small portion of the black art material, save the rest for later, and then you just stick it onto here, onto the bottom section of the box. And that's it. And now we want to trim off the excess. So just go ahead and do that. And that's actually essentially mainly it. Um, a lot of this has to do with the, the lighting conditions and stuff like that. Um, but essentially you're holding the card like that in this kind of a grip. And this is a little awkward <laughs> uh, biddle grip. Um, essentially, you don't really need this black art. You could actually technically hold your hand completely covering the bottom of the box, or if you're going to do it on this side, you can cover the top of the box, and then just hold the cards like this. All right. Um, but the black art helps helps cover in case of a flash, so so you can kind of nonchalantly hold the cards, sort of like that. And then when it comes time to produce, um, you just flip over. Okay. So this is the action for producing the card box on this side. You're just flipping it over to the front. 
once more, showing single card, flipping over. And on this hand, you have the uh, Gon deck set up, and you're just shooting out like that. The Gon deck is right here. Um, so essentially, you're actually just giving them the Gon deck gimmick uh, like that. Okay, so that's the Gon deck gimmick. And all you're doing is you're just doing this simultaneously. So one, two, three, like this. It's a very, very visual uh, transposition. It looks really, really cool when you do it right. Definitely really difficult, um, but try it out. Give it a shot. Uh, I don't perform this personally, um, but this was an idea that I came up with. I thought it was really cool to share, so why not, right? Uh, there it is. That's the Gone Deck transposition. So this is the portion where I make the uh, the Gon deck turn into coins or the Tic Tac or whatever. I mean, you can produce anything you want, really. Uh, how this is done is, uh, if you're familiar with Blackheart, then you probably already knew the method. And you're right, it is Blackheart. So uh, grab the paper velour that you had, uh, and now we're going to kind of upgrade your Gon deck to a Blackheart-friendly card. So, uh, as of course, there's this Gon deck part that we already have. We want this portion now to be black arted. Okay, so we take the paper velour, and because it's sticky, we just kind of stick it there. Like that, and just cut off the excess. Save this for later, and kind of just cut around the, uh, the Gon deck. And that's it. So you completed the black art portion. However, now we want to um, actually sharpie the corners black as well, because th those, those can flash. So get, grab a black sharpie. Grab a black sharpie and just sharpie it in. There you go. So I've successfully sharpied the corners so that when uh, when you're laying it down on a black piece of felt which is what I do in my live performances, uh, it completely blends in. So, yeah, so it actually works quite well. Uh, let's, let's get into what it looks like when I'm producing the coins or, or any object, rather. I have here the object that I'm going to produce. In this case, it's just a piece of tape. Actually, to be honest, you can use anything you want. Um, and now I have here this black paper velour. Now, the black is actually does not match uh, my shirt perfectly. So you are going to see a flash. Uh, this is actually kind of a lighter, the lighter, a dark gray, like a very dark gray, but not black sweatshirt. So um, it won't, it won't hide the black art card perfect, perfectly. When you're, when you're kind of, you know, figuring out what shirt to use, just make sure it matches up perfectly with the paper velour that you purchase. Or you could actually just, um, if you have a, a, sh a black shirt that you don't really mind cutting up and you have a duplicate, what you do is you just use that black shirt, you put it into onto the card, uh, and that way the, the colors match perfectly. Okay. So now I have the object in finger palm. That's how I do everything, by the way. It's oh, it's all in finger palm. Uh, same thing with the coins. I just had the coins bunched up, about twelve of them, all in finger palm like that. And uh, yeah, and then the card is here. We can of course activate the flap like you saw in the trailer. And uh, same thing when you let go, of course. Blah, blah blah blah. The va the deck vanishes, and this is the important part. Now you want to change and switch hands, and as you switch hands, I'm grabbing the piece of tape. 
Now in the trailer and in my Instagram video, I had a, a piece of uh, Tic Tacs. I would use Tic Tacs, I just don't have any right now with me. Um, but in this case, it was the same handling. I grabbed the Tic Tacs like this, okay? I went out, and as I wave, I kind of just uh, twist my wrist like that, okay? Or you can go from here forward and back as well. Uh, there's also that. And I shook the Tic Tacs like this, of course, in this case, um, it's a piece of tape, but yeah. Now, for the coins, it was actually completely different. I used the method that Tom Stone uses in his Benson burner routine. Uh, he would take a sponge ball, and uh, I'm not going to go too much into depth, into detail, but it's kind of the similar method, or at least this is where this was inspired from. Let's say I have a table and a servant. I would grab the card like this, I would turn over and criss twist like this, and now I'm going to drop the black art card. And now the coins that were finger palmed here, I just let go. So as I drop this card, as it falls, okay, as the card is falling, the coins are going to fall with the card as well. I'll show you what I mean. So here, I drop the card, and now the coins drop as well. This will kind of uh, misdirect the audience in case they see a slight black flash. They're not going to be looking at that. They're going to be looking at the coins dropping. In any case, black art is always very sensitive uh, when it comes to lighting, uh, conditioning, how far away the spectators are sitting, and of course, misdirection. So you want to always practice a lot in front of the mirror, in front of different lighting conditions, and get uh, very accustomed to what you need in order for it to work. And also material is another important thing when it comes to black art as well. So best of luck with the one that you use. Uh, for me, as you've seen in the trailer, uh, I use it on the mat, so it vanishes on the mat, and it stays there. So, uh, but yeah, figure it out, play around with it, I'm sure you'll be able to come up with your own appearances of random objects, or just a vanishing uh, gone deck as well, like a completely vanishing deck, as you've seen in my performance. But anyways... So welcome to the most difficult section of the tutorial. If you've made it this far, this one is that double color changing uh, box gimmick. And then at the very end, it kind of vanishes into a single card. Uh, it is incredibly difficult to make. I struggle to make it. I, every time I know I have to make it, I kind of cringe at the idea because it's very, very difficult. Uh, and here it is. So uh, what you need is two Gone Deck templates. We're gonna make, I've already pre-made these. As you can see, these are the ones with the front ends. Okay, so the one with the, that shows the front of the box, like that. You can do it on the side, it's very possible. Uh, I just decided to do it on the front. Okay, so I have two of these. Uh, and on the second one, I just actually made an incision, and you'll realize later why you need to cut off the top of the end, okay? Let's begin by gluing down the templates. Okay, the first one, we're going to glue the first template onto the random card. Uh, and this, this random card, I'm going to go ahead and grab my fake front bicycle box. Um, of course, you don't have to, you don't need to do this. Um, you can always do this with just a regular playing card. I'm doing this because it's going to help it, help it uh, be much easier for me when it comes to pasting the, the card design on top of it. Okay. So you start by gluing the first Gone Deck template onto a random card. Uh, in this case, we're just going to use the, uh, the, the bicycle, uh, the, fake, the fake box. So just super glue that. Kind of paste it on there. So we have, uh, later we're going to put on the front of the box, of course, as you very well know. And now, uh, here comes the hard part, we're going to glue on this second piece with the cut off edge. So what's going to happen is essentially, this one goes down first, turns into a red box, and this one goes down, turns into a blue card. 
and then you can show both sides or whatever. Uh, this is how it works. This first one is actually elastic. So we're going to make this um, an elastic band down into here. And then this one is just magnetic. So can't really do anything about it. So we're going to have to actually use sleight of hand to kind of bring it back. Uh, let's, let's deal with the um, playing cards first. So we split a box. In this case, we're just going to split a uh, regular bicycle logo. Kind of guesstimate how much we need. Now you'll notice um, that this is not going to line up perfectly as you can see over here. It's a little bit long. Uh, part of it is my fault on my end. I left too much. I, I, I left too much on the middle section when I was scoring this. However, um, this, this gimmick is bound to make, you're bound to be a little bit long on the front end. Mainly because this second card has to compensate for this first Gondek gimmick. As you can see over here, this has to reach over it. Thus, this has to be a little slightly larger, so it's always going to be stretching forward a little bit more. Uh, you fix this by angling the deck like that. Okay, so I'll, I'll just I'll just glue this down and I'll show you what I mean. So as you can see, when you angle it forward like this, you can't really tell that there's a little bit of an offset. Now, however, I, I did offset this a lot. This is much more than, than usual. So uh, when you are making this, just make sure that the middle section is not, not, that, uh, not that large. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to actually make the, uh, the front end of the box over here like this. As you can see, the front end of the box. So all you do is you take the playing card box and you're gonna cut out the front part. Okay, so now that we have finished sticking the front of the flap with the card design, uh, we have the first part made. Notice I angle it like this, you can't really see the crease as it flaps over with the elastic thread and then the second one with the magnets. Now we're going to attempt to cover this with the red box design. I'm just going to kind of show you what it looks like makeshift. As you can see over here, that's sort of what it's going to look like. We're just going to make it now uh, for real. So as you can see, it just kind of flaps over. And this is going to be done with sleight of hand uh, with no thread at all, uh, just with a magnet to keep it enclosed like that. As you can see, it goes down. So I've already pre-split those cards. Um, as you can see, I'm going to split the front now, the front of the box. Get the thinnest layer. The reason why is because you want it to be as, it takes up as little space as possible for the card. So that when it encloses, it's not too thick. Kind of just measure out. Make sure it's aligned, and then now make your incision. Cut along exactly where the incision was. As you can see, it's a really clean cut. That's very important. Now we're going to glue it onto the card. Now we're going to stick it on to the middle section. As 
So now I want to do the bottom section. Do the exact same thing, glue the bottom section. And now we just paste it onto the card. Trim off the excess. So there you go, you have majority of the top finish. Now we want to do the front end, so we glue that as well. And after you finish, stick it in onto the card. Just like the previous ones, you just cut off the excess. Now just check to make sure everything works properly. As you can see, the flap goes up and over. As you can see, it's going over quite well. And uh, just make sure everything's glued down perfectly so that there's no issues later on. Uh, I tend to score the back design a little bit more to make it so it bends easier. Now you should have two more magnets left. And so just grab those two magnets and we are going to finish off the remaining last tab with the magnets. So glue on the first magnet onto the top. Make sure it doesn't clear the border because remember again, it is shaved off at the top so there is no extra border. Then the second magnet. As you can see, that last vanishing card box is gonna be done without any elastic thread and it's done pretty easily through just a wave of the hand. So just bending over the pieces, as you can see, now we have to use elastic thread to get the blue one to go backwards. Okay. So now we're just gonna hook that up. And of course, uh, with the red version, as you can see my thumb is pulling it back uh, to complete that vanish. And the magnet is gonna have it stick. So I have over here um, a hole puncher I'm just going to hole punch the two areas that I need to thread for the red box. Grab some thread. And we're going to do the same exact thing with the double threading. So here it is. Uh, here is the advanced, uh, sorry, this is the, the flap, double flap card, color changing box. And um, this is what it looks like. So the first one goes over by itself, and then the second one you just kind of wave over like that, uh, turning into a regular card. Now of course all you're going to do uh, to cover the magnet and the thread is to paste another court card over here, and on this side, what we're going to do is we're going to split a card and cover that magnet. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. It's very simple. You tap the card multiple times. And we're going to cut out a portion of the card that matches exactly where the magnet is. And there it is. Perfect. So here's the performance once more. We have the red and the blue. This is what it looks like. The blue one goes over, now the red, and then your thumb contacts this end and pulls it back to turn it into a single card. And then one last time you just cover up the court card with the magnet.
like so. That's it.